Hello guys, welcome back to the Soda Stream. We are in the after hours segment of the Soda Stream. We are live right now with Isha Jerome. I, I, I pronounced that right, correct? Oh, you nailed it. Oh, I nailed it, man. He cheers, is he, buddy. He is from the excellent cheers, man. Drink it up. It's a bit. Okay. It's a bit, man. He is the host of the Soda Pod based out of Vancouver, but totally recommend listening to his stuff super great content on hockey you know doing a little bit more whatever um but isha how's it been going here in quarantine i know i we talked about this briefly but you're in an rv right now what what's the deal with that yeah well first of all i have to say you got your partner with soda sticks this is the soda stream i'm glad to represent the soda pod oh, yeah. the soda we're all awesome soda initiative. guys here we're all soda here um no <laughs> thanks for bringing me on guys yeah I'm, i've been following you know the stream you guys are absolutely killing it again everyone watching please donate um, I'll be getting my donation in depending on how much fun I have after this interview. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, no, it's going good, man. Yeah. So if uh, the, if you haven't seen from the background, which it's very Minnesota, and by the way, I got my fishing hat up there. I got my Perfect. bow and arrow that my grandpa built over there. I got my fly rod in the corner. Yep. Perfect. Um, so basically, I, I actually, I'm, I'm from Vancouver Island and people, you know, because we have to take a ferry here and people, you know, from the United States and even the eastern part of Canada, because they think they're the center of the world out there. But anyways... <laughs> Nova Scotia, um, Fox. They, <laughs> fucking Toronto. But anyways, uh, Vancouver Island, it's actually, it's a big ass island. You know, the Hawaii of Canada, as I like to say, because yeah, it's not like, it's not like summer year round here. We, you know, North Island gets a little snow, but it's pretty much a rainforest. So our winters are just a ton of rain. Our springs are like rain or shine. Anyways, while, while all this was, uh, while this COVID stuff was going down, I was finishing up my university in Victoria, which is one of the biggest, well, the biggest city on Vancouver Island, um, actually closer to the States than Vancouver, funny enough. And uh, I, you know, my university kind of, the classes were cut, can classes were not canceled, but everything was moved online. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, uh, I was scrambling cause I was in the midst of like moving a little bit more North Island. So instead of like kind of waiting it out because you know, I don't know what, like I probably should have. I was like, if this city fucking shuts down, I do not want to be here. So I just packed up my shit, moved up to a, a sweet little uh, town called Union Bay, which awesome. is on Union Bay, um, with my buddies who have a massive like four acre property. They just built their first house slash shop nice. structure on the property, uh, developing parts for their dream home. Still have like an acre and a half of forests. And while they were doing all that, they lived in this ball and ass trailer. So they were like, Man, since the renters market where you were about to live, like I had a house lined up and everything, uh, kind of just mm -hmm. shut down right now. You know, taking precautions during this health crisis. He's like, move into the fucking trailer. Like, we'll we'll keep you busy with some work around here. There's mountain bike trails in our backyard with the beach, and uh, and then other like mountainous parks right in front of us, like 20 minutes away. So I took up the opportunity and uh, still, you know, very busy managing the hockey podcast network, doing soda pod stuff. So I'm I'm somewhat working, but also being able to take advantage of. Well, having some free time and being able to mountain bike. I fucking love mountain biking. Oh my god, there's nothing, than, there's nothing better than there's nothing better than crushing some birthday, beers and riding those trails. Bike, right? I'm pretty sure I saw a tweet that you said that you were gonna spend your birthday mountain biking. That's awesome though. That I did. I also spent Perfect. this morning and, and I'm gonna spend half of tomorrow doing it as well, I think. Oh, yeah. Well the thing is like I went out to like my, my, my younger brother just got out of the Marine Corps and like uh he he's in a base down in California that's like two hours base out of Vegas. So we had planned this for six months. When he gets out, we're gonna I'm gonna fly out to Vegas, we're gonna party in Vegas, whatever, go up through Denver. But he still got out at the same time, but all this crap came down, so like Vegas was completely closed. I still had to go down there, it was dead. But we drove through like Utah and Salt Lake City and like Wyoming beautiful oh. like we went to some oh, like beautiful parks and, and stuff mountain the mountains are like honestly like it, it's beautiful like when you go out there and to mountain bike like it's it's relieving it's it's, it's honestly you just you you become one with nature you know what i'm saying man it's it's like yeah. a, it's it's more addicting than cigarettes alcohol or any drugs and that's good that you can, too you learn yeah that. and it's good for you and like you know yeah. you, you get in shape doing that so no it's it's a lot of fun i actually had all my recording gear and stuff uh set up outside because i wanted to show off like just this beautiful little patch of property that they developed mm. because when they were living here, building their place for the last two years, mm. they obviously like wanted it to feel like home, but clouds were coming in. Like I said, I live in a rainforest, so mm. you never really can tell when the weather's going to change. Actually, I'm 20 minutes away from, uh, for all those nerds out there from uh, where mm. George Lucas filmed Endor in return of the Jedi. It's really in a park. Yeah. 20 minutes away. That from was in Canada, here. Vancouver Island, baby, wow. called cathedral Grove. You look at the That's massive crazy. ferns and old growth trees. I've like, now, when I was in high school, 
I used to I used to get stoned with my buddies and walk through it hoping Hell to find yeah. stormtrooper helmets. But obviously we oh. never did. Now now as an adult, don't do that much anymore. But I do it's right on the lake as well, which is one awesome. of the deepest lakes actually in all of North America. Probably doesn't rival some of you guys in Minnesota, but mm. you know, Vancouver Island has some pretty nice lakes as well. Yeah. And it's right about uh, around this uh, mountain frame and some of like the most gnarly, steepest hikes that I've ever done. And I've pride myself on being able to do some pretty long hikes. Like I've done the yeah. West Coast Trail and nice. hopefully can do the North Coast Trail if, uh, if that mm. opens up here. Uh, again, if uh, some of these restrictions are lifted. So I got two questions for you. Okay, so All right. one, we're from Minnesota, so everyone sounds like, or everyone says that we sound like Canadians. I would like to know your opinion on that. Do Jake and I sound like Canadians? Uh Okay, well, it depends because people think that like all of Canada sounds the same. Whereas, honestly, man, like it's almost just as diverse as the states for you know how many yeah, provinces we have exactly. I <laughs> you agree. know compared to how many states you guys have down there. So like BC, I, I don't know, like we're we're, we're pretty. Uh, I guess we're pretty average. Like us and Californians would probably talk the same. I mean, obviously, there's like. We have our redneck lingo up here as well. Mm -hmm. Alberta, you got Calgary and Edmonton. They're a whole other breed. You know, they're like you Southerners uh, way down, down <laughs> yeah. south there. Saskatchewan, they're their own thing. Saskatchewan, like, um, bud. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're their own thing, you know. Well, same with uh, Quebec as well, right? Quebec. Well, fucking that's the thing. Quebec. Fucking Quebec. <laughs> I speak French, actually. Uh, I speak French because I was in French immersion as a kid. Nice. You know, for us, it's like, it's really grimy because like reading and watching kind of these French movies, like mm. when I was like growing up in, in class and stuff, it was all like from France, which is nice and clean. Whereas like you listen to Quebec was and it's just like such a dirty French. Like I swear, like some of their words are literally just like, Ugh. you're like, man, that, that wasn't a word. What that the fuck sound, did you but... just say, man? Like, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. What's... So. I have some I have some Quebecois friends, so like I'm I'm kind of used to it now. But then like awesome. I don't know, like Manitoba, they I think you guys probably sound the most like Manitoba. Yeah, they're right above Minnesota, right? Exactly. If, yeah. So like a Winnipeg, hybrid yeah. with Ma with Manitoba and us out and us out west, because you guys have some pretty awesome slang, as well. And uh, yeah, so I don't know Canada's pretty diverse. Because then you look at Newfoundland, and they're like a whole other breed as well. Yeah. You know, they're like kind of like Irish, kind of broken yeah. French, kind of. I don't know. <laughs> South, I guess they're, they're their own breed as well. Well, yeah, I was going to say like people, I, I think people like in America like to stereotype like Canadians as sounding all exactly the same when in reality, um, there, there's so much diversity in Canada as well from all the provinces. But have you ever watched, you've, you've watched, have you watched South Park? Oh, dude, every season. <laughs> they, they've definitely had their fair share of making fun of Canadians. I mean, I mean, do you, they you, nailed you gotta it. Find that hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> dude, With yeah, like man. the bobbly heads and like, I'm not your buddy guy. <laughs> I'm not your guy, person. Well, it's funny because Americans probably think mm. that are probably more familiar than like mm. the Royal Mountie Police than we are. To us, like yep. they're just fucking cops. Mm. Like yep. they look exactly the same. Mm. They're in their Dodge cars, whatever you know. Like, but I don't know. I live on the like the that's far west coast Canada as you can get. So again, like my world is even a lot different from that of Vancouver mm. and, and yep. even you know Al Alberta, which I spent a lot of time in Calgary as well. Probably the best city in Alberta. Edmonton's a dump. I'm sorry if anyone's listening from Edmonton. <laughs> sorry, probably aren't, I'd agree. So fuck I've never been there, but I just feel like they're a dump. I just, I can just, yeah. <laughs> I, Everything's I should just go there. old there. It's a brick. It's like, it's like every, it's like your town in the 90s. Everything's brick and everything's <laughs> rusted. Where Calgary, like, there's an, it's not just cowboys. Like, they have yeah. an awesome music scene, like rock and roll, and if you're in electronic awesome. music, and even like blues. Yes. Even in the blues, I'm a huge blues guitar player and singer, and like, nice. that was my shit in Calgary. I found so much, like, you awesome. know, bluegrass. They have a great Sweet. music scene. It's close to the mountains because it's around the border with BC and, and Calgary, which have like the Rocky Mountains. So, yeah, man, I'm pretty lucky to be where I am, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, like it, 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 a lot of people, would, uh, well, we announced we do the Wild Takes podcast, Zane here, me. But what we don't know, what a lot of people don't know about us, we were in a band, actually. He played bass oh, no guitar. Way. Yeah, I was, I was a drummer. Our singer, unfortunately, moved to Arizona. We, we Forever, uh, we'll ever, forever be a band. Uh, but we, we call ourselves, <laughs> so uh, awesome. yeah, we call ourselves 12 Hour Day, all spelt out. But yeah, we did like some rock music, pop punk. And he, yeah, <laughs> our, our, our producer, Jack, or whatever, is singing one of our songs. But, yeah, boss we, man, what's up, Jack? Yeah, Jack, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. you got a shout out. Let's yeah, you, you got a shout out. He was the guy you talked to on your podcast, Potty. What hey up, guys, buddy? How's it going? Uh, I'll be back in like 10 minutes. I got to run Bubba the card to get more beer. So uh, I'll be back. <laughs> Just give me a hot Sounds minute, good, man. man. Hot yeah, minute. but it, it's crazy. A lot Dude, of people think... That's so cool. Yeah, Let, we, let's we, talk a little music then yeah, because like yeah. I'm... I, I, I'm no like theory guy per se, but like I was trained in vocals as a kid. That's and as awesome. Soon as, as soon as I, I got my first job, I think at like 11 or 12, I went to 
you guys don't know what this is. Our local, it's probably, I think it's debunked now, but our local up here in uh, Western Canada, we CD store. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was called HMV. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd go there on every paycheck awesome. and buy buy two CDs. And if there was a record on sale, buy a record. And the first two I bought was uh, was Kiss Alive and Dookie. Nice. And oh, like, Dookie, up. Green Day. Right? So that was one like, of the first songs we ever covered. What was it? Uh, Brain Stew? Yeah. Brain oh still. yes, that's awesome. The my, my first band in grade yeah, that's seven. That's on Dookie, I think. Oh no, no. Uh, whatever. But we get the we get the early Green Day. Well, like Early my Green. first my my first band I ever played with in like my grade seven talent show. We played Holiday off American Idiot. Awesome. And I remember. Yeah. Hell um, yeah, dude. I remember I yelled out a derogatory term because it was cool back then. Now I probably looking back, I was like, ooh, that was a that was a bad motherfucker. But anyways, <laughs> um, what was the term but, the, the the word used in that song? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. yeah. That makes sense, then, you're literally but now, just covering the song. But now looking back in grade seven, I was like, oh my god, my parents were there. But anyways, <laughs> oh no. That's actually hilarious. That was like but one anyways, of. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. That was like one of our shows. We played at the uh, the University of Minnesota where I went to school. <laughs> Remember that? Okay, yeah, your so. Up. So we had a <laughs> we had a battle of the bands thing. Okay. So we showed up and 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 we had songs that said like a couple swords like hell and damn. And our lead singer, I told him the day before, do not swear, dude. My parents, my grandma's showing up. He's like, dude, hell yeah, dude. I, I won't swear, dude. Shows up, and for like, for example, there's a song like uh, we call we. Uh, please just f off. Please just f off. Yeah. Well, the, but Hawaii too. Yeah, yeah. That's okay, there's a song called Hawaii where it says like, get the hell out. There's lyrics in the song that say get the hell out, which is it rhymes better. He literally says. While we're doing the song, get the fuck out. Just get the fuck out. <laughs> like, dude, roll, my man. parents are like looking like, I'm like, dude, why didn't you, sw- why? I'm like, dude, you can't be doing that shit. Like, just stick to the script, like how we wrote our songs, man. Because well, seriously. That same exact show. We had a song called, please just F off. That's what it was called. And he's the lead singer. He turns into the microphone and he's like, this next song is called, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and he's like, what? That's not this song at all. What are you And, and it's about? like, and it's like, I'm not, I'm not the one to be, and we're not the one to be like, I, 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 let, let's abide what our parents think, but we're like, we're like, uh, but it's like, dude, that's not the name of the song. We're not trying to be like that super punk band on purpose. Like, yeah, we swear, man. No, that's the name of the song. But yeah, that that's so cool that like, uh, so you play guitar and stuff like that. Yeah. So the where I was getting at was I was in, so grade seven was obviously like early on. Um, my first guitar I actually found in my elementary school. They shut down because. BC, they don't, they don't got their they don't got their school district shit figured out over here. Underfunded because we oh, fight God. way too many firefight or too many forest fires in the summer. But anyways, um, so they cut the music program. So they were throwing away a ton of like classical guitars, like big nylon string guitars. That, like I would never buy if I you know if, if I had the choice as a kid. But I was like shit, like I can't afford a guitar right now. So I jumped in the garbage like the big garbage can after shit. school one day, walking home and just dug out like the best the best one kind of maintained mm. it myself there you go learned how to learned how to play guitar eventually bought a squire bullet because like tom along every kid every kid you know in high school had, uh, who played guitar had to play those power chord blink 182 yeah, songs yeah. oh um, yes blink and then a buddy of mine who's like he's he's an artist in every facet guys he actually he's a professional break dancer mm-hmm. if you can believe it so he's in like movies he does like stunts nice. he literally does like underground break dancing battles in vancouver where they just honestly bet by putting money in cash and then like the, the, the bigger screams at the end like decide the winner like i'm not even kidding like yeah. it's awesome he draws anyways he also produces music uh plays piano and makes beats so in high school i would write tunes on my guitar and sing and he would make the beats and 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 you know rap and whatnot and that was a lot of fun so we played like open mics obviously too young to play in the bars there even though out here our, our drinking age limit is, is 19 18 in calgary which can get dangerous by the way Ooh, but uh it's good so age. it is yeah. it's I, I moved there when I was, yeah, I moved there when I was 18. It was a lot. But anyways, uh, so we, we got comfortable just like playing in front of crowds and whatnot. That when I did move to Calgary, I hooked up with these, uh, these two musicians who one was That's like awesome. very like indie folk, um, acoustic and synth. And she had an outstanding voice. And the other was like, like grunge and heavy metal. And I was kind of awesome. like blues, blues, ska, right. folk. Yeah. And we just made an acoustic trio where we all like sang and played guitar That's our so respectively. That's so sweet though. And, and it was so much instant chemistry. We, we literally played shows to, to pay our rent. It was awesome. Like, so that was a great experience in Calgary. That's just so like sick. working our day job to like save in my case for university and whatnot. Um, things got messy when we hit the studio though. And then, you know, 
life life happened i moved back to the island but mm. yeah man since then like i haven't played like shows regularly but still uh still love playing guitar like i sold a lot i had like seven guitars at one point because i thought it was cool wow. to have so many guitars yeah. i got the tom delog signature still nice and, uh, i got a strap because like i miss I, you <laughs> john mayer in my opinion is the best guitar player right behind him clapton santana and the strap key sound I, it, um, you can say what you want about his personality. The guy is a musical genius. And dude, I, I, I do love his drummer. His drummer had a book. I, this, this is probably coming from me because I'm a drummer. Steve Jordan, right? Steve Jordan, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. That, he's that, uh, the, the black dude. Like, I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, he, no, he's a great guy. He wrote, he had a book, and he had a great quote. He's like, because I've overthought it when I play with you before. Like, like I got I to gotta do all these drum fills and everything just to be good. But he literally said simplicity is 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 not stupidity like he said no like, man simply just do a basic beat just play to the song you don't have to do all these fills or anything like he is he wrote a book on it or something like that i haven't read the book but i just saw some of his quotes like he he has some good stuff on that look stevie ray vaughn is 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 a fucking mm -hmm. legend but bb mm -hmm. king is the king yeah. right? oh for sure and bb king is the simplest mm -hmm. style blues you can play yet mm -hmm. that's the shit that like gets you going man yeah dude that's classic too oh and john mayer like he he does a little bit of everything you know he can yeah. play the poppy tunes he can like i've seen him three times in concert man mm. blown me away every single time and i've seen clapton i've seen santana, clapton. Oh, santana. I, i've seen the greats right because uh, music was my thing before sports yes, yeah. and uh it still is to a degree yeah, exactly. but it's hard to listen to records every day when you're producing podcasts and managing 64 fucking people <laughs> Well, Zane, you want to talk about that that that, that uh, John Mayer music video that he had, where he like uh, like he was denied oh a budget from his music. <laughs> he went to like some birthday party. What song was that? It was like uh, it was this one recent night, song. That one. Yeah, yeah. What what? And he made like a joking music video for it. it Have you crazy. seen that? It was like I don't think so. No. It's like it's like some crazy thing where he went to like a place where like he's gonna google it right now but it was like okay. a place where he went where like kids go to like for birthday parties to make like a a funny music video because i guess like his music video company or his production company wasn't going to do the video for his for his budget so he just it's went down new light. new light okay i know i know the song yeah. so if you look if you look at the music video yeah it's so funny where like people do like oh, it's... mitzvahs and funny videos and stuff like that, and he recorded his legitimate so cheesy. music video for New Light at that studio, mm -hmm. and it is That's hilarious. So funny. He's like, he's joking around and dancing. It's on a crappy green way. screen, but it's so awesome. Funny. It's awesome to see oh, someone man. who is popular as him. Just says fuck it. Like Just say fuck it. Like I don't care what people think, and it's it's perfect. And he's still got a lot of positive reception for it. Like it's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I mean. You, some of the greatest artists are a little out there. Yeah, they like, don't go with the like flow. They, you hundred percent are right. Like mm -hmm. even look at like the classical musicians. You look at the like the classical, literally like painters. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, they got things. They they got some screws loose, and that's yeah. okay because I feel like you have to be. You have your brain has to be a little abnormal to be that fucking amazing. To be that and John different, Mayer is unique. that. Um, to go back to the, like that music video theme though. Do you remember uh, and talking about like kind of old school stuff like Blink One Eighty Two? Yeah. I'm a huge Blink-182 fan. Yeah. Me too. Um, we are and, too. Uh, we saw them in Mystic Lake and Prior Lake nice. live. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I saw them when they went on their like reunion tour and they brought Travis back uh, oh, back yeah, in, yeah. in Vancouver. Sick. I think it was like 2008 yeah. or so. Yeah. Um, but do you remember like the, uh, what was it? The Rock Show where that music video oh. literally like they got like they gave a them a budget. Yeah, and they, just, and like, they did whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was, oh, that awesome. was they gave, like, awesome. such a, like it was it was obviously more than a thousand bucks. Like oh, for sure. They got a little yeah. bit more than like the budget of Napoleon Dynamite, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, Jake, we're here with the soda pot. I think we should talk about a little bit of Minnesota Wild hockey. What about you? I think so too. I mean, Isha knows a lot about his hockey. You talk Minnesota Wild hockey all the time. I know that you. Are a big hockey guy, so you must be disappointed. I mean, I mean, I mean, the circumstances make sense with the whole COVID pandemic and everything, but it's got to be disappointing that the season ended, that we couldn't see essentially a conclusion. We can't be in playoff hockey right now. We'd be in like the like literally the nucleus of it right now. But like, when and how do you think the NHL, uh, NHL season will start? Do you think it will come back? Do you think they'll come back with an expanded playoff? Do you think they'll still finish this season? What 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 do you think in your personal opinion? Well, from what I've heard, first of all, I'll go with what I've heard. The league wants to a have a draft in yeah. like in a month, which is which is crazy, especially mm -hmm. if like there can't be trades because Montreal has fourteen draft picks and they're probably just like, God, <laughs> damn it, damn it, <laughs> this sucks. I don't want Minnesota fourteen Wild. players. 
the Minnesota Wild have Pittsburgh's first round pick. What would they do, right? Because well, I know there's conditions attached exactly. to these things too. So that's that's a whole other mm-hmm. can of worms. I know the National Hockey League wants to have a camp, like some sort of quick camp in July mm-hmm. to get the season back. You know, rush through the season in in you know they propose various uh, fashions. And then, and then start a playoffs, and eventually they said even start the season next year in November. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what the league wants. Do I think it's realistic? Well, I don't know, man, because everything going on with this health crisis, especially up here in Canada, and I've been plugged in a little bit to what's going on in the states, but I, I try to keep it local because obviously just affecting me. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know, it's it's all like I can only right. worry about so many things right, right now. Um, but from but from what from what I gather, it's like it's not it's not the league's decision, right? It's the states or provinces or federal government's decision mm-hmm. on when they're going to allow sports to continue. Mm-hmm. So, for example, BC right now, they're not allowing any international mm-hmm. travel. Mm-hmm. Like no one can come into BC, and they're still like e- even within provinces, like the flights have been reduced to like one or two a day, and even then they're, they're pretty much empty because it's just not advised. So. Mm-hmm especially with international travel, like Vancouver's top players, like this is one Swedish kid. They're, to, they're goaltenders from Sweden. Like mm-hmm. how the hell they're going to come to BC with these restrictions. So there's that that we have to take into account. And in my personal opinion, I think, I think that you can't, you can't please everyone right now that you can't, no, you can't, you can't fix everything right now. You kind of have to choose like it's nothing's black or white. However, you kind of have to choose. Do I want to put all my resources, time and effort into this season and then also, like, as a residual effect, have to deal with crap next season or cut your losses this season, focus on the draft, focus on mm-hmm. free agency, and then put everything into next season and make sure that it's okay. And I say that, that's my, that's my opinion from kind of like mm-hmm. a logic point of view. Where my heart is, fuck no, man, I want to see hockey. It hit me yeah, like, two, a like a few yeah. days ago, it hit me because my, my birthday's April 7th. That's when mm-hmm. the playoffs fucking start like yeah. a day or two after. Is, right. So, so, so I'm used to like getting into that routine, coming yeah. home after work, a game like starts at oh, four man. o'clock That's my time. Great, though. And then oh. I watch playoffs until 10 PM my like Pacific time for me. And it's yeah. just like, that's my routine. All the boys and, and, and girls come over. We have a great time. Usually I like, I'm the host. I'm a Washington capitals. Like my teams are Washington, Minnesota and, and Vancouver. So mm-hmm. when Washington won like a couple years ago, like it, it was, it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Because I've been so busy with a um, university student again, I manage this podcast network. Mm-hmm. I host the Soda Pod and got a lot going on. Clearly, I'm living in a trailer. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. I, uh, I it didn't hit me until like a few few days ago where I was like, holy shit! Like, I, I don't watch a lot of Netflix or TV. Like, I'm a huge mm-hmm. pod. I'm a I'm a sports guy. I listen to sports radio. Mm-hmm. I play music and I have mountain bikes. So like, without sports, I'm going insane. And finally, hit me like there's no playoffs and especially it bringing sucks. back to the mid- it does suck, man. And bringing it back to the Minnesota Wild, they were one point out in, yeah. you know, and they were in on the standings fire. wise, and they oh. were on fire. Exactly where the Dallas Stars were kind of like lose. I think they were on like an eight game losing streak or seven game mm. losing streak. Mm. The Wild were playing awesome, and I feel so bad for Miko Koivu, who mm. kind of had his had his future written. You know, like mm. uh, in his mind, what I imagine is that like we're on a run right now, whether we make the playoffs or not. Like we're we we're we left everything on the table and I'm yeah. okay with that if I'm going to retire this year because mm-hmm. the Wild aren't re-signing him next year and it's going to be hard for him to restart and get back into that mode that he was because he was looking great on the fourth line. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're a pretty big Vancouver fan, right? Well, yeah, I haven't followed them at all this year, man. I've been 100% dialed into the Minnesota Wild, but yeah. yes, like I, Hell I yeah, bleed bro. blue and green though. I hate Canucks Twitter and uh, <laughs> and our and our fans are fucking nuts. I was there when they burnt the city down. It was insane. Oh. <laughs> well, I yes, see, to I, answer your I question, played at Burnley <laughs> yeah. High School, so I with, got to play with Brock. Oh no way! Yeah, Brock Besser. Yep. He was actually my line mate every single mm-hmm. year growing up. So I'm mm-hmm. holy to shit. Know what do Vancouver fans think of Brock Besser? Because obviously the dude was a he, – he is a stud. He's a complete stud. He has one of the best yeah. shots in the league. I mean, nationally, people like him. I mean, I mean, he's on the all-star, in the All-Star game, but it, I think it all comes down to what, the, what do the fans think of him in Vancouver. Oh, they love him. Yeah. They love him. And mm-hmm. they've been – because he was the first out of the, uh, the new wave of rookies with this re- new, new – I say new. It's seven years old, but with the latest regime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, Bo Horvat was like the first one, but he yes. was drafted by the the, the past regime. Um, but now that Jim Benning was in there, you know, Brock Besser was his first like real hit. Like he got him what twenty third overall in the draft, um, and you know, he's so marketable with him being like just a fucking 
like god out there with that flow i should have wore i have like the flow hoodie there's an initiative uh in vancouver where this like local tea company made just a hoodie that said the flow that had brock's with like nice. face in his hair and i bought yeah. one um but no man as soon as he landed in vancouver after coming from north dakota he was on like every billboard i marketed him so well and he's like one of the young the young core and mm-hmm. he's a a great goal scorer and though his production has been hindered a little bit the last couple season, it's mostly been due to injury. Yeah. And I don't think the fans have given up on him at all. Sometimes, you know, our crazy media, um, they, they like to, you know, speculate with trades and stuff like that. They're not moving this guy. He's a pillar piece. They got him on a good deal. And, and I think, you know, eventually he will end up in Minnesota. But I think mm-hmm. for for the best years of his career, he's going to be a Vancouver Canuck. Yeah. Well, I want to ask, like, I mean, speaking of, you're you're obviously from based out of the Vancouver area, but like, what attracted you to be a fan of the Minnesota Wild? Being you're not from Minnesota, but like, what what made you become a fan and follow them uh, to be a become a Minnesota Wild fan? Well, they've been good for realistically, like I don't know, the last five or six years. Like they've been, you know, top of the Western Conference. So I'm a hockey fan first. So I've just been plugged into to knowing knowing this team and I haven't been following them in depth. Like I wasn't want to pie for it. <laughs> like, I, like I wasn't, uh, I wasn't like listening and, and reading everything Michael Russo wrote until this year. Um, but you know, ba- back growing up, like the Minnesota wild and Vancouver, oddly enough, like just, they hated each other. Mm-hmm. They had some heated playoff bouts. I mean, I'm never going to forgive West walls. God damn it. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> But the the real you know the the full full disclosure and the full transparent story is when my business partner and I Dylan were scouting uh, you know people to bring in for the Hockey Podcast Network. We were originally going to do the Vancouver Canucks because we had already we had a radio mm-hmm. show under a certain Vancouver Canucks style and brand. We had a podcast mm-hmm. like it'll be easy just to switch. We have chemistry already as co-hosts doing radio and podcasting. We'll just we'll just do the Vancouver Canucks show. But we ended up finding these two unbelievably funny dudes. Like they'd fit in right in your brand if you know they were from uh, Minnesota. from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That's it. Elijah and Josh, shout out Stick and Rink. Like, they are hilarious. So we, we found them and we're like, man, like, these guys have to be the Vancouver guys because in a saturated Vancouver market where there's just, like, podcasts popping up left, right, and center trying to be the next, mm-hmm. like, TS Center Sportsnet. Yep. You know, these guys are authentic in knowing that, like, we're going to talk, like, 20% hockey in our podcast and 80% bullshit talking about yeah. but what it's like to be 25 living in Vancouver. And it's raunchy. It's hilarious. And, you know, they, they, they're a hundred percent authentic. So we handed actually our entire brand over to them, Twitter accounts and everything. We're like, you guys are sticking rink now in the network. And so we're going through our list and actually Dylan and I were like, well, we'll just, we know enough about any team. We have a few months to do our research and get in touch with the local media and, and fan base. We'll, we'll, we'll take the team that's hardest to scout. And because Minnesota has an awesome media core and great fans, mm-hmm. yep. it was so hard to like get someone to join a network because everyone was already fucking established. Yep. Which, shout out to the market. Everyone, like, your guys' media is unbelievable. One of the mm-hmm. best for hockey and arguably sports mm-hmm. in North America. And I say that like as a, like an authentic sports fan who follows you know, the NBA mm-hmm. and, uh, and the NFL to a certain degree. So we couldn't find Minnesota. So Dylan and I originally both took up the Minnesota Wild, did our research, and I had already, like like I said, been following the team a little bit the last few mm-hmm. years and just dove in 100%, man. Like I stopped watching Canucks games. I nice. stopped watching Capitals there games. You I, go. Just, I only listened to Minnesota podcasts. Skull, baby, everything. Skull. Minnesota, like... Skull, man. <laughs> everything, man. Like I'm all in. I'm all in. Like high school hockey. I watched yes. Hockey Day in Minnesota. Everything, mm-hmm. man. Like... <laughs> so I so I went all in and uh, Dylan went out to help our, our boy the San Jose Sharks podcast with shout out the Stick Hungry nice. podcast they have they have actually former defenseman uh, Kyle McLaren as a co-host nice. now with them nice um, so they're doing outstanding work he's over a there solid he's got defenseman too wasn't he oh yeah. man awesome yeah, yeah he's he's, he's the hip check he was the dirtiest hip mm-hmm. checks you'll ever see <laughs> hey he was a badass I think I saw like a YouTube video of him when I was like scrolling through like my like, damn like <laughs> like no, that's awesome. Yeah, man. So, uh, so Dylan and, you know, producer T over there in Kyle are doing outstanding stuff. So I kind of broke off. Um, I've been continuing to do my thing ever since. Um, when we, we cut down to just do one episode a week because of, mm-hmm. well, there's not a lot of sports to talk about, which is good because it's given everyone an opportunity to like reach out to their local, uh, yeah, network local markets, yeah. fans, yeah, network and stuff. And I always did a Monday guest segment on my Monday show anyways. So now mm-hmm. it's just been giving me the opportunity to reach out to more people. Um, I had Ryan Carter on the show last week. We got a Jay Fresh Hockey coming, uh, coming on this week so yeah it's been fun man 
You had I, Ryan, I, you I had, fucking love this market and I love this team. Oh, like, you, you guys you, have no you, idea. Like you had Ryan Carter on. Yeah, last week. Oh, dude, he's so funny, man. He is such a. Oh, great he's guy such a beauty, time. man. Like I, uh, I, I went in when when I, I, I don't know if you you should try to get Kevin Gorig on the show. Um, okay. He's like the Minnesota Wild on reporter, but I, I've talked to him. I went into a Minnesota Wild practice. He'll be and on the stream tomorrow, by the way. Who? Gorg. Kevin Gorg, by the way. He'll be on the stream tomorrow. But uh, he he was nice enough to bring me into a Minnesota Wild practice to like kind of talk to Anthony LaPanta, who we had the, on the stream earlier today, who is a Minnesota Wild play-by-play guy at, uh, for television at Fox Sports. Dude, and he's, he's so good because us Canadians, yeah. we rip on your American broadcasters. Mm-hmm. Anthony, he's he's one of the best. He's oh, pretty he's Canadian solid. in my eyes. But, but Oh, he's... He's really good. Yeah, but I, when I was there, Ryan Carter was so funny. He was talking about how when he was on New Jersey mm-hmm. and he won the Stanley Cup and, and he was in like the Stanley Cup Finals when the coach said, hey, you can go in now. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, I'll go in. I mean, he was a solid player, but I don't, I, you know, he was a funny dude. He was so a third that, line, fourth line. Grand yeah, kind of guy. yeah. Well, that's the thing. And yeah. he played that role so well. He yeah. talked about that on the podcast, how like the coach, mm-hmm. they trusted that line yeah. because they got it done in the dirty areas. And uh, yeah, he's a pretty uh like, He's a pretty open guy. Yeah, um, super and, nice yeah, it was, guy. It was fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was fun, and yeah, he gave us like ha- over half an hour of his time. So yeah, that's go awesome. check it out. Hey, mm-hmm. do you do you have a drink in front of you right now? Yeah, it's uh, it's from this. I know you guys out there, you you love your sodas, and you guys have arguably as, as good of a craft beer scene as us in BC. Mm-hmm. I still mm-hmm. think that we we take the crown in North America. Probably. you can be the judge when mm-hmm. you come visit sometime. I this go one's a Boulder Dash Brew, and it's called it's called the Sneaky Weasel. Because these fucking things sneak up on you. They're five and a half percent. There you um, go. That's warm. Like the, they taste like that. piss, but cold. <laughs> they're really Jesus. damn good. You go, we're drinking uh, a Bud Light right now. Oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> oh god, dude. I don't know if I can do oh, this. Oh, cheers, shit right boys. Let's do it. Here, Fireball here. shot. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers. It's after dark, so we have to make sure to drink. I wanted you to drink quick, too, because I have a question to ask you, and I'd love to hear your answer. All right. Is Eric Stahl a Hall of Famer? So before you make your answer, he is tied for 96 oh, all-time yes. in games played. He's 71st all-time in goal scored. Top 100. 99th all-time in assists, and 84th all-time in points, and he's 59th overall in game-winning goals. I mean, he's a top 100 player of all time. He has a Stanley Cup ring, too, to top it all up. Yeah, 100. And he's loose! Hall of Famer, dude. <laughs> Paul Allen. Man, like... It was an ode to Paul Allen. It's a bit, okay? It's... He's the Minnesota Vikings radio guy. We had him earlier today. He's just hysterical. I tuned in, actually, for a little bit of that. Again, like, I I don't watch the Minnesota Vikings. I'm sorry. No, I, that's totally fine. wild, but it's... It has to be with the sea. It has to be with the Seahawks out here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm sorry, but I am familiar. I am familiar. Sorry, I didn't get the uh, the reference. Hey, well, well uh, before we get in talking about what you did, I mean, are wait, you wait, gonna, wait, wait. Are let me quick. Let me quickly defend myself. Okay. Let me quick, no, yeah. defend myself. I really don't. At the end of the day, I, I really don't give a fuck about the NFL. I, I try to support the CFL, even though all my even my Canadian friends make fun of me. So there you go, BC Lions. I fucking love you. Mike well, Riley, your beauty. Mike Riley. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, you're gonna have to. You're in the Pacific Northwest, technically. Canada, uh, Washington State. I mean, you're gonna have to start covering some Seattle games here when the, when they become a hockey team. I mean, are you are you planning on getting involved with that with that NHL expansion team? Yeah, well, I'm I'm actually half American, so if I do get a job out there, it'd be it'd be very easy transition for yes, me. Yes, there you um, go. But definitely with the Hockey Podcast Network, you better believe we're going to be bringing in some Seattle content. Um, we've been like we've been talking to the people down there, and like kind of th- there's not a lot of information coming out, even like to to mainstream media. Mm-hmm. But to, to some of my friends who work um, just in sports media down there, and some family as well, we've been keeping our ear out to like who's going to start producing content and. Hope, you know, I, I would love to cover that team. Um, I kind of just want to stay on the Minnesota Wild train and stay authentic now that I like I am a fan of this. But I am super excited because the Vancouver Canucks have never really had a true rival. I mean, that every now perfect. and then. Well, exactly. Really, yes. the sh- I'll go Blackhawks because um, Calgary because they're like close. But then, but like the Battle of Alberta is, is its own thing. No man, Seattle's going to be Vancouver's rival. You think so? Is that, is that I think so. Do you think so? Well, I, I think they're, they're so they're gonna close. Fo- 
Yeah. Or say it regardless. <laughs> well, if you could say, I mean, who's Vancouver's biggest rivalry right now? If you could get if three you hours say, away. Yeah. Edmonton, Van Calgary. No or? one. No, there one. isn't one. There isn't Seattle one. could be a big like, one. Though. Maybe, maybe Calgary. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. If you had a guess, Minnesota. Minnesota's our biggest rival. <laughs> hey, there's been some good Vancouver Minnesota yeah, matchups, but yeah. Oh yeah. If you had a guess, see, I'm not sure how much you paid attention to the Seattle name thing, but if you had a guess what their name would be, hmm. do you have any clue what you'd say? The Kraken. <laughs> I I I hate the Kraken. I know there's that's this, a dumb uh, fucking name. I'm sorry. There's the a size? black rum up here in Canada that's mm-hmm. called Kraken, and yep. it's I just not a fan. There's plenty yeah. of advertising. Um, for that. but anyways. I, states oh yeah i think uh i think steelheads is a good name because that would be awesome man yeah and because the steelhead is actually the fish of the the salish sea which the salish yeah. strait is what divides yep. seattle you know the, the pacific north that, that that strait actually divides vancouver island from from bc and vancouver and the mainland mm-hmm. too and so it's, that's the the fish that's badass sorry the sock guys i guess would be a good one too i know there's an ultimate frisbee team that said they're gonna sue the nhl <laughs> franchise if, if they take the sock guys so <laughs> i didn't hear about that that's crazy. there's that ultimate frisbee yeah they involved. were not happy with me on twitter when i was when i was you know pumping the sock guys tires they're like i'm not kidding man they're like dming me they're like retweeting my stuff you know it, was, it got nasty there we go yeah i've, I've heard names like yeah, like Kraken, a sock guys, but I think Steelheads would be great. I know there's like a minor league team in like Idaho that I think is named Steelheads or something like that. But I think I, there's an ECHL team. Yeah, the ECHL yeah. team. I've heard another name like the Thunderbirds, who are actually a Seattle like junior team that they would like transition over there. But like, I think anything would be better than the Kraken. Honestly, I, I think that's stupid. That's been the rumored name, and I'm like, yeah, I, I yeah. come on, man, that you can do better than that. I like I, I like the metros, like the Metropolitans. Yeah, that was like the original name. They were actually had a team. Um, of, you like, know, they could brand. Oh, no, from the producer. Yeah, yeah. This isn't Montreal, man. This is for the Stanley Cup. <laughs> I, there okay, we go. little little backstory behind that. Zane's just like freaking out. So, <laughs> so uh, you, you know who we had on earlier? We had just mentioned Paul Allen. Um, he's the Vikings radio guy, but he was supposed to actually do some wild Minnesota Wild radio broadcasts. Um, he's a he's a big wild guy. He's super enthusiastic, super energetic, and everything. And but recently, since in his time uh, not doing anything really, he's done some virtual NHL games on NHL Twenty. Oh, nice. So, uh, yeah, uh, last night there was some virtual game. Uh, they don't play them. They just, like, literally it's a computerized game between both teams. Right? And, and last night it was like a game seven between the Minnesota Wild and Dallas Stars to go to the, to go to the Stanley Cup. And uh, when uh, when Minnesota, Minnesota won the virtual game on NHL 20 and Paul Allen was like, Dallas, this isn't Montreal, man. This is the Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Just crazy <laughs> stuff like that. But in virtual reality, the Wild are going to the Stanley Cup, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. And um, which – anyone who listens – Did you cut out? Listen to the okay. Soda Pod the, here on this next episode on my – point of view, Minnesota Wild are, are actually uh, – we're actually one of the best teams in the NHL yeah, this before, year. And if they had better season. goaltending mm-hmm. – Stay locked. If they had better goaltending, they would probably have a playoff spot. Well, let's, I want to get there really quick. Uh, mm. We're going to wrap up really soon here, but before we do, you brought up goaltending. Netminding. Do you see Devin Do you see Devin <laughs> Dubnik on the Minnesota Wild next year? Do you think that there's a roster spot for him still? That's a good question, though. I mean, there's a roster spot for him, but the the succession plan has to has to get rolling. So exactly, finish goaltender. You can't keep Kadobin down there. He's playing great. Well, who he is was. who is that guy the Wild just drafted? Hunter Jones or that they goalie? just signed Hunter Sent Jones? Yeah. Last year? yeah, yeah, he, yeah. We yeah, just drafted just him last him. year. I mean, he, yeah. What do you think of him? Yeah, yeah. He he's he's pretty good. I actually talked. I talked about him in the last Soda Pod episode. Nice. Yeah. He 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 doesn't look. Spectacular, but yeah. sometimes that's okay with the netminder. You know, he's, he's yeah. a, with a younger. They develop, um, but yeah. I think Kapo Kakin and I think Kapo Kakin and they're gonna have to really give a, a a real look to next season. Definitely. I mean, he had like what a few starts, and I mean, he looked spectacular. And they just, you know, I mean, 
sent him back down. But, yeah, I think Kapokakinen would be a, an excellent option to look at, honestly. he's he, he looked great in the few games he started. I mean, the guy looked good. Maybe we should finish with the rapid fire. I think we froze. Isha, can you hear us right now? Yeah, and okay. like I know oh, okay, okay, there he it had is. family respond. Are you boys? Oh. I can hear you boys. There we you go. all good? There we go. Oh, we're good. We just froze for a second. If you would just want to repeat your uh, your thoughts on that really quick, I think you were probably mentioning Cabo Kakinen there. I mean, it just froze up for a second. Yeah, well, I think just this – oh, no worries. The the succession plan has to start with Cabo Kakinen. He's deserved a look. Mm -hmm. um, stay lock, yeah. I mean, bless his heart. He played very, very well this season. He didn't play like a, a starter – um, again, if you do a deep dive into the numbers, and Devin mm -hmm. Dubnik, you can't blame him. He had family responsibilities. Yeah. He had to mm -hmm. be there for his wife. Definitely. So back to Definitely. answering your question, is there a spot for him? There still, there still is. However, they have to start uh, thinking about the future. Yeah, hundred percent. So we are going to go with our final segment here for ten thousand yeah. takes. Thank you so much for joining again. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh this man, thank you. So much great thoughts, and insight. But and anytime you want to come on, just let us know. I just let us know. Yeah, we'd always love to have you on, man. But Sounds we're gonna do good. something. We're gonna do something called the rapid fire. Jake, would you like to explain that? Yeah. So we're gonna do something a signature segment we've been doing with all our guests. If you've tuned in at all, we do this rapid fire segment where we just talk about some hypothetical would you rather questions, and just. You kind of give us your answer. It's pretty quick, you know, one or two word answers and everything like that. Are you ready to go for that? Let's go. Let's freaking do it, bud. All right. So first of first off, would you rather spend the rest of your life blind or in an Olive Garden? Uh, Olive Garden. Those de those breadsticks, man. They get you. Breadsticks, man. Oh man. If you were given an all expenses paid trip to Cleveland, Ohio, would you take it? Why not? Why not, man? You do got to experience some of the city. Uh, I don't know how much you've got up, got this much in Canada, but like, is the correct pronunciation hot dish or casserole? Casserole. <laughs> you can't even say casserole. Casserole. I'm sorry. Cas casserole. Cas is it casserole? Wow. Okay. There yeah. we go. I mean, I've heard. I've heard, I know what a hot dish is, but I don't Very think Minnesota anyone says thing. it. Ever. Yeah. 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 Um, if a movie was made about your life, who would play you? Ooh. That's a that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Jake Gyllenhaal. There you go. I, there you go. I was man. hey, you know what, guys? I was I was gonna shave and look like presentable here, but then I figured like you guys ain't shaving. You're yeah. doing that funny thing on Twitter, no, so I thought I'd you know blend in. You know, yeah, in terms of although this is two days, I'm half Persian. This is two days, boys. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you, can, uh, you can do no. I mean, I hope you don't take this like. In terms of like personality wise, you reminded me of like uh, Naziza Sari a little bit. You played Tom oh, okay, in Parks okay. and Rec a little bit. You remind me of that, like in terms of the personality and like stuff like that. Like, I know he I is actually... Indian, but that, right? I'm not well, Indian, but that's like. Well, no, I'm just saying you, you have that you have that like comedy personality like him. I feel like I'm just saying personality wise. Uh, I'm, de I'm definitely verbose, so yeah, I'll, I, I can see that. He, he's a funny guy, so total no, compliment, good. total compliment. But Jake Gyllenhaal, thank you, thank I can you. see as well, honestly. All right, would you rather have the head the size of a tennis ball or a watermelon? Um, probably tennis ball. Okay, there you go. Can you explain why? Why would you have a head? Probably just, just easier to get around. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and to be honest, like most of our guests have said watermelon. We've only had a few guests say tennis ball. So really? that's, Oh, your yeah. poor neck if it was a watermelon, man. I know, man. That would suck. So that's reasonable. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. I mean, I mean, you. I don't know how many times you've been on to Minnesota, or how much you're, how much you know about like our the Twin Cities here in Minnesota. But if you could choose, would you choose Minneapolis or St. Paul? Which one? Um, I know they both. They offered like two. Mm -hmm. They offer different things. I'd probably. I'd probably at first Minneapolis, but then settle in St. Paul. Yeah. That's what I. That's say. kind of like how everybody is growing up. Like honestly, we we like we go to Twins games, Vikings games, and then we uh, grow up and realize how much of a shit show Minneapolis is. Kind of. <laughs> Four major sports are in Minneapolis. Yeah. And then of course the Minnesota Wild. Are in but Minnesota. that's why it's so unique. I remember growing up, like driving through St. Paul and seeing that's the XL Energy Center. They're the only major sports team in Minnesota yeah, yeah. and St. Paul. It, it just it just makes a unique atmosphere. Um, moving well, on. I got, I got to yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you can go. You can go. Well, I was just going to say like another thing that pisses me off about, you know, everything going on here. And one thing is devastating. If I told you guys actually, when I jumped on or when you jumped on my podcast a few months ago, that yeah. if the Minnesota wild made the playoffs, I was in a bet with my buddy and former uh, co-host here, Dylan, 
um, that I, I would have to fly to Minnesota to you go to a game. To. So I was I was honestly going to probably sleep on your guys' couch like right now if the Minnesota Wilds made the playoffs. You, you might be. And before we move on with the rest of the rapid fire, I know so we also mentioned that you have to come down for the Winter Classic next year as well. Because oh, hundred percent. Got a place to stay too. You, you got a place to stay. We thank already you, said you. with Jack, man. I mean, we got to yep. party it up. You know, the night or two before, you got to come down for a few days and just get trashed. Not too trashed, so we can't go to the game the next day. But you know, just hockey state championship too. I have yes. to hit that up. The oh my side. gosh! Have you ever been to a right. Minnesota high school tournament for hockey? It's unbelievable. I, I I know I know about it. I've yeah. watched it. I've watched it on TV. But I, I have to. I have to go. Yeah, you got to go in person. Man, like junior hockey, like me- like Memorial Cup out here has nothing on high school hockey in yeah, Minnesota. That crazy. that says something. Yes, it's yes. insane. Yeah, it's. I, I highly recommend you come up for the Winter Classic and then also you know come up for a high school state hockey tournament. It's just it's 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 amazing. Um, so moving on with rapid fire in self defense, total self defense situation. How many fifth graders could you fend off at one time? I would say I'd probably. I could probably take four of them. I got two. Four. I got two legs, two legs to kick, and two arms to punch. So, <laughs> but see, you're dealing with ten year olds, right? So, did you not just think this one punch would like take them out, right? You'd you'd think, man, but like some you know, some ten year olds who are like five five already, like it's like like these hockey players who are mm-hmm. ten years old, like they're bigger than me. Well, I remember I was thirteen years old and I was sitting in the locker room and I remember looking <laughs> to my left and the kid right to the left of me had a full beard and I was like, what the fuck is going? What on? What is going on, dude? This guy kicked my <laughs> that ass. Was oh my god. That was that man. was straight up me. <laughs> um, my friends at fourteen would make me, you know, make me go buy them liquor and like nine <laughs> nine times out of ten it worked. <laughs> But like I was scared shitless. I'm yeah. 14 years old. I'm like what the fuck? So you exactly. so 14 years old. You had that. You had a full beard. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you just walked into a liquor store. The drinking age is 18. So that you looked. 18. Bought Dude. like, bought like the sugariest drink, like Vex yep. or whatever it's called, oh. like Palm Bays and Mike's Hard or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Where yeah. they just look at me like. All right, well. <laughs> I'm almost 24 years old. I'm finally growing out a full beard. It took me like. 24 years of my life to finally grow to full beard, but I'm getting there. I'm I'm man, still not I, even a full beard yet, man. I mean, what? Damn. I just tur- I just turned 27, and now I got hair on my shoulders, it's coming out of my ears. It's fucked. Everywhere. Hey, that's part fuck. of being a man, 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 bro. <laughs> you got to deal with it. If a woman doesn't like it, she doesn't like it. You got to keep moving forward. I don't Real know, man. <laughs> exactly. Um. So, uh, going on to another question here. Would you rather wear a shirt that's kind of itchy, or a pair of shoes with a small pebble in it? Um, I both piss me off to like I know more dude. than you know. Like I'm a I'm a big hiker, like long distance hiker, and I hate both of those things so much. But because I'm because I'm a fucking real man, a hairy <laughs> hairy hairy beast out here, I'd have to say the pebble because like any sort of wool just kills me. It especially with like the added like inch layer of hair that I deal with. So there you go, dude. Hell yeah. Oh, I mean I agree with that. Like. We've heard so many different. That's one of our like most controversial questions because we've had like uh, mixed answers. Like we've had most of the other oh, questions yeah. have one sided answers, majority. But like that's been itchy, itchy, sh- itch or uh, itchy shoes. <laughs> hey, that can suck though. By the way, if you get itchy <laughs> shoes, you might have athlete's foot. Go, go check that out. But no, if you have a shoe with a pebble in it or an itchy shirt, that's been mixed. And like honestly, I, I think I chose like the itchy shirt. But like I, I that's like a fifty one forty nine answer. Like I'm fifty one percent towards the itchy shirt but i'm like i'm so, i just it's a it's a shitty question because it's like ah oh, both of them would suck so much oh i know oh gosh but moving I, on to, i know yeah. i know yeah go. you have you, you have go. a couple more i just want to say like before before we leave here and i know we're getting yeah. close we're getting close good. to the, yeah. the time i, I wanted just to get your guys's like first hockey experience either like at a junior game or like the xl energy center because i have one story oh. to conclude with before we wrap everything up and was it was my first nhl game you but i really want to hear about your one. guys you can go first First, like wild game or something like that, or first, yeah, like your first, like big my, hockey my first experience. Big you, hockey you, experience. You, you be, I was five years old. Yeah. My dad, uh, he grew up in South Dakota, and mm-hmm. there was no hockey in South mm-hmm. Dakota. And uh, I grew up my first five or six years of my life in Grand Forks, North Dakota. So my dad just comes home one day when I'm five years old. He's like, "Do you want to play hockey?" And I was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. hell yeah!" Like, right now, and I was like, "Yeah." And mm-hmm. He signed me up for a team, and I was playing the next day. And you and loved I, it. I That's loved awesome. It. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I got to play with uh, the one and only Brock Besser. I got to play nice. with a lot of great Dude. players in my life. 
So I'm that's very so sick, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it goes for me. Like I grew up playing. I was an I was a goalie. I didn't play at the level that Zane did. Still playing some weird ass beer leagues. Um, I mean they've been canceled. Um, but no. But my my first great hockey experience, like I. So when I grew up, um, obviously I knew like the North Stars were a team, kind of. Uh, I saw the Wild logo when I was like four or five, right when they became a team, but I was still super young. I'm like, what is this logo? And I found out it was the hockey team. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I kept begging my dad for like two years to go to a game. And he finally took me a game when I was like seven or eight years old at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. And I, and to this day, I still think this way. Back then it was like 03, and I thought it was the most state of the art arena all time. I felt like I was being tra treated like I was upper class. I mean, it was, it was awesome. There, it was just a nice. beautiful, I mean, I was used to the Metrodome. That's the only place I went to games before. So I went to the XL Energy Center in St. Downtown St. Paul. I'm like, this is amazing. And they played at the time they were, they were still called the Muddy Ducks of Anaheim. And also Hell at the yeah. time they did not have overtime. So the game ended in a tie. So it was kind of disappointing, but my God, like I still think about it to this day when my dad took me, we had like one of the high no nosebleed seats, but I, it was an amazing experience. Like I still remember it to this day. And I remember my dad actually had to remind me of this. I did not remember this specifically, but I, I kind of remember it when he brought it up. But um, uh, back in 03, whenever this game was, the Wild got in a fight with some – I can't remember the players. It might have been Flip Cuba or whoever. Flip Cuba! I love Flip Cuba back in the day, actually. <laughs> I, I love when they scored because they announced her. But anyway, staying on track, um, whoever got in a fight, uh, two guys got in a fight, you know, uh, Anaheim Duck and Minnesota Wild guy. Yeah, Johnson or something. It might have been one of the, whoever those enforcer back. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there was blood on the ice and everything. And my dad reminded me, he's like, yeah, he's like, you said like, oh, this, like he said, this is awesome. I want to go to another game. This is sweet. And I'm like seven years old because I saw blood on the ice. And, and I'm like, and apparently, and I can't remember it, but like my dad said, like, it's awesome that there's blood on the ice. I love this. This is so cool. And it was just, I still remember it to this day vividly. And it went to, I just remember leaving the arena kind of unsatisfied because it was a tie that ended up overtimes back then. But, oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it uh, you know, I was still playing hockey at that time. I had never been to a wild game. I'd been to Twins games and some go for football games and stuff like that. And I just still remember that game. It was just an awesome experience going to the XL Energy Center for that first game with my dad and um, seeing the seeing the fight and everything like that it was it was unbelievable it's amazing to hear that violence brought your family together I'm yeah really exactly you guys. i yeah. saw blood on the ice and my dad said this is awesome i want to go to another game that's what i said apparently i was like seven years old but we'd love to hear your story yeah we'd love to hear your story yeah let's hear your story i'd love to hear it yes all right well like just first of all that's see that's what connects minnesotans to canadians right there. yeah we're the um, south so province like of canada <laughs> <laughs> so I I grew up in Northern BC before yeah. before living here in Vancouver. So I went to junior junior A, uh, BCHL. We had a WHL team there. So I went to all kinds of junior hockey. So obviously growing up as like a kid, you know, chasing the blimp with the gift card or whatever. I had yep, a ton of memories yep. there. But my first NHL game because of, even even though I lived on Vancouver Island, I spent all my money on con or on concerts in high school. I never went mm. to a Canucks game. Yeah. Um. Even though I went to Rogers Arena every every other weekend for concerts. Yeah. But anyways, exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't until I moved to Calgary after high school for work that I actually went to a Flames game. Which, unlike you, <laughs> your experience at the XL Energy Center, the the Sal Dome's a fucking dump. It is old as hell. I know they're it's trying to get character. an arena. Yeah, it, it's got character, but it's a dump. Yeah. Rogers Arena way nicer, and you, you know, walking the concourse for concerts. Dump, so anything with a dump. So, anyways, um, so me and my buddy, we got. Uh, I, I believe my actually my first ever game was a Detroit game. Got to see Lidstrom. It was awesome. Nice. You know, had a couple beers, awesome. but like you know, kept kept the night like pretty tame. My second game, and this was the my big NHL first big NHL experience. Uh, I worked late uh, at a pretty like high end cabinet shop. That's where I was employed, and the, the boss, you know, hooked us up. Me and my buddy with my my roommate at the time with like really nice seats, like right behind Mika Kippersoft, like oh, club nice. seat. Like they were they were they were they were like two hundred and fifty dollars tickets each, and so we were pumped. And he's like, Damn. it was a Thursday though, so he's like, don't drink too much. Like you guys are eighteen. Like we need you to work tomorrow still. <laughs> yeah. And so we didn't okay. listen to him at all. You know, took the train all the way Fuck down. It, and, and I don't know if you guys know this out in Minnesota, but it, and a lot of Canadians don't know this either. But the 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 arena beers in Calgary, I don't know what they do do to them, but they sh they shoot them up from the bottom, and then there's like a little magnet that that seals it. Where my buddy was so drunk after two, he was oh, hitting geez. the magnet a bit, and beers flying everywhere. But they call them the heroin beers. Um, Ooh. that's. You know, not really politically correct these days, but that's what they call because I'm not even kidding. They must pump them up with some gas, like CO2 or some bullshit. Because three in, guys, you're wasted. Like, <laughs> falling on the floor. So we had I five, go eight, 18. No, Man, 
This is the oh, this is the first time I ever in my life blacked out. So all I, I don't nice. remember the game, unfortunately. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we beat Dallas. But yeah. all I remember I'm at one sure point, I'm pretty. We ran into a coworker, and at one point, I look at my buddy Jake, and I'm like, "What are you doing, buddy?" And he's like, "Call your call our friends." I'm going to be on CBC. I'm like, what are you doing? And he starts climbing the glass. He's like, you remember that guy in Calgary back in the day naked who got on the ice? He's like, I'm going to keep my clothes on, but that new guy is going to be me. So I'm like, oh shit. Because he actually like, even though we were wobbling around, I actually thought about this. He went like down a lower level to where like it's the, the, the locker room's yep. like tunnel is because yep. it's an easier spot just to jump and hit the, the top of the, the fucking uh, glass there. So while he's doing it, I literally like grab him. Like I pulled him back. I'm like, you're not doing this. <laughs> no, you're not um, going to do this shit, man. After spilling our, his sixth beer, my fifth, we eventually, I think, got kicked out of our seats. Found, <laughs> uh, watched the rest. It was like the la- end of the third period. Watched the rest in the Concords and uh, somehow got home. And I remember working that morning. We had like our team meetings, like our our uh, our shop team meetings at like i don't know 6 35 a.m on the dot and i was just like hunched over <laughs> next to the board like they're like you know what you have to do today i'm like yes they're like hey well you don't have to listen to us just <laughs> just go and i hope you learned your lesson about the saddle dome beers and boys <laughs> i've learned my fucking lesson about the saddle dome beers. Well, saddle honestly, man, it's, like arena. A, it's like a badge of honor to get kicked out of yeah. an nhl game for drinking it really you, you did enough to like in get Calgary, kicked out in, in, in Calgary, Calgary, out of all places. places where people are probably getting hammered on a nightly basis like a daily basis to oh. watch hockey that's crazy yeah. our, cult- our culture out here on the west coast is a lot more green than than in calgary we'll just say that <laughs> Well, we're at the end. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. This has been awesome, Jake. You want to wrap it up? Yeah, I mean, definitely, Isha. You know, it's great. I love talking to people about hockey. I love talking about anybody, any sports, but like especially hockey. We're very passionate about it. We, me and Zane, run that Wild Takes podcast that you've been really tuned into, especially the one where uh, Bubba uh, uh, Bart or not Barfs, but uh, burped a lot. Uh, definitely <laughs> ate a lot of fast food. Oh yeah, he had some like awesome people. takes. Yeah. Get some awesome, awesome Especially takes Especially about that Miko Koivu. But you'll, oh, yeah. But you, you'll definitely have to, like, when we get that started again, um, it's kind of been done because we can't really talk about anything right I now. Don't, I think I was supposed to be your next guest, and then, like, yes. the season ended, and you're yes. like, all right, well, rain well, check. <laughs> damn it. But, yeah, we'll definitely have to have you on for the next Wild Takes podcast yeah, when man. we have it because, like, we, you know your hockey, especially – uh, but Minnesota Wild and everything, and we all talk wild stuff on there. We're kind of goofy and funny. It's not all serious as well. So we'll definitely have to have you on that for that. You know, you, you know your stuff, man. Your friend Vancouver. But it, again, like it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. And we 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 really appreciate you coming out for a great cause and just to help us gain viewers to ultimately uh, lead to donations for uh, the Groveland Food Bank here, based out of Minneapolis and Minnesota. Yeah, thanks guys. Like when you reached out, you know, like I was I was honored. Mm. Um, I think this is a great cause. Mm. I've been tweeting it from uh, from my accounts, or pe- people from Minnesota actually follow me, that's, so that's, that's good. good. And uh, um, I definitely have you know sent it to my buddies and friends and encouraged them to reach Thank out. You so um, it, it, you guys have been absolutely killing it. Everyone tuning in, like these guys, like you saw the pizza the boxes on Twitter and Instagram. Mm. Like these guys are grinding. They're bringing you such good content. Tomorrow, oh hell of a roster tomorrow. I mean, I'm like Mike Russo. Man, like I, 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 I would kiss that guy's feet. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I he's a like yeah. from an aspiring like media guy here. Yeah. Like he is one of the best I've ever read, man. And like I'm, I'm tuned in. So I'm so excited for that. He's a great get. And you guys have awesome guests tomorrow as well. Again, like thanks for bringing me on. You guys got to jump on my pod, uh, soon yeah. too, at the Soda Pod, because like I had a whole list of stories. And we just kind of naturally went through a lot. So we got to get into some other topics. That Definitely. I have to boys on your podcast. podcast. I know I know. me and Jack were on it, but you'll have to get Zane on it too. This guy knows a lot about hockey. He played, like he said, he played with Brock Besser. Uh, he's the guy I to can't bring wait to. I can't wait to hear about that. And I can't wait to yeah. tell you guys about uh, working in community radio, talking hockey. It's, <laughs> it's a hell Definitely. of a time. Yeah, honestly, just let us know. But unfortunately, we're out of time for, for our time with us tonight. But uh, but what thing of life we can do whatever the hell we want. So, I mean, honestly, get us on your podcast. We'll let you know when we can get us on, get you on our podcast. We'll let you know, man. Cheers, boys. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Peace Thank out, man. man. Have a good night, man. See ya.